Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's first video. As was on a Friday, we're doing uh, JMA Friday. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the month ahead with the Japanese and CFS V2 models. Uh, later on this afternoon, we'll have a look at the shorter range models in terms of trying to pin down uh, the risk of cold weather and easy winds next week. This is proving such a hard job to get this together. Uh, and I can tell you that what has happened overnight is that the ECMDF is really going for cold weather uh, next week, whereas the GFS and its ensembles has collapsed. But we'll deal with all of that in today's second video. This first video is going to have a look at sort of the longer range, um, more generalised charts in terms of what we can be expecting for uh, the month ahead. Given the chopping and changing we're having just in a few days' time, though, do bear in mind that a lot of this longer-range stuff is, well, it's always subject to change, but it's particularly subject to change um, this week. So it's a snapshot of what these two long-range models are showing for the month ahead. It takes us well into March. You can go to around the middle of March now uh, with uh, JMA Friday. So um, it's a snapshot of what they're showing, but very much subject to change and uh, we'll have more on the shorter range in today's second video but we'll begin by having a look at the japanese uh jma 500 millibar height to anomaly flow charts for um the next month these are broken down into uh weekly periods uh we're looking at the pole view down first of all so that's the north pole of the northern hemisphere uh, up there, well, it's kind of like there. Uh, British Isles is uh, just there. So, um, this is the week taking us from today, 16th through to the 23rd of uh, the month, 23rd of February. Yellow, orange, and red extrapolates to above average heights, which is high pressure, and blue extrapolates to below average heights, which is low pressure. So, the JMA is signaling a block of above average heights, high pressure to be sitting to our north in the weekend with below average heights. Um, to our south. We are therefore on the cold side of the jet stream. We'd be doing something uh, rather like that with the flow and with the jet. It's a very complicated uh, sort of pattern. But the upshot is that we are cold in the week ahead. And if the model is right, we'll be pulling in the winds from an east or northeasterly direction. Uh, week 2, which takes us from the 23rd of February through to the 2nd of March, looks like this. And it still looks cold. We've still got a strong blocking signal there around Greenland and Iceland with below average heights uh, to our south. It means we'd be pulling the winds in from the east and the northeast. So it will be a cold scenario. Wintry too, these areas of low pressure to our south would be providing the uh, precipitation and probably the risk of quite significant snow, actually, to southern parts of the country. So ending February and beginning March on a very wintry note, if the JMA is right there. And then we go through to week three and four, takes us from the 2nd through to the 16th of March. And signs of a change. We've still got a blocking signal, but it's moving uh, more towards Canada and uh, away from uh, sort of the Arctic a little bit, which allows this area of above average heights in the Atlantic to begin to rise north. Now, this is still very unsettled. The difference is that as the blocking signal weakens somewhat, we would start to allow the jet stream to come back northwards again. And so temperatures would begin to at least begin to start staging a bit of a recovery. Now, bear in mind, this is a two-weekly anomaly. It's weeks three and four. It takes us from the 2nd through to the 16th of March. It covers the first half of March, if you like. And it could be transitional. So it might be something like the third week of March. It would, um, the third week, which would be the first week of March, uh, might still be very cold and blocked. And then it's in week four that second week of March, but the jet stream begins to rise up a little bit and we start to come out of that cold weather, still very unsettled, um, but start to come out of the cold weather and see temperature staging a little bit, bit, a little bit of a recovery. That's always something you have to keep it back in mind with a two-weekly anomaly that there might be some uh, sort of transitional period uh, taking place. But overall, the JMA, as it has been for several weeks now, still signalling Quite a lot of cold weather through the rest of February and going into March as well. So have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude view and to see how the temperature and precipitation 
uh, anomalies that stack up with this. So uh, this is the week one 500 millibar height on. Remember, we've got a blocking seal up to our north. You can't see the North Pole in the Arctic on this view. The British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. But we know we have got a strong blocking seal in the week ahead, the 16th to the 23rd uh, of uh, February, which would be bringing the wind in before, anyway, from the east or the northeast. So you expect this to be a colder than average week. That's what the JMA is showing with temperature anomalies coming out colder than average for the UK. Most parts of Europe coming out colder than average as well. Precipitation anomalies are actually quite dry. We blocked off the Atlantic, so it's not really surprising. Precipitation anomalies are coming out drier than average. Quite cold and fairly dry in the week ahead. If anything, the blocking signal strengthens into week two, which is the uh, 23rd of uh, February through to the 2nd of March. So we have very strong blocking to our north. Then we have this area of below average heights and low pressure uh, to our south, um, which this would be very cold. It could also be really quite snowy, and the snow could especially be focused down on the southern part of the country. Temperature anomalies are coming out very uh, significantly colder than average. We're going down to the two to two, two to three degrees below average on the uh, temperature scale. So a really cold end to February uh, there with the JMA this morning. Um, precipitation. So it's, it's still on the dry of an average side, but you'll notice these blue curves, which is slightly above average precipitation, are starting to get closer towards us. So um, certainly for the south and the southwest, there is a risk of some really quite substantial snow uh, there if the JMA is right. It is, of course, a big if. Uh, and then we go through to weeks three and four, which is the second through to the 16th of March. And uh, this one looks unsettled with below average heights through the country. The blocking signal is beginning to move over more towards Canada uh, up there. And the jet stream is starting, we think, to uh, rise northwards as well, possibly turning a little bit less cold. Um, temperature anomalies are coming out for the two weekly anomaly coming out colder than average. So that does imply what I talked about, that um, you may get a very cold week for uh, week three, which is the first week of March, and then week four might go a little bit milder as the jet stream starts to lift up, uh, lift northwards again. That's the second week of March. It would be like the 18th, would be like the 8th to the 15th of uh, March. Um, that one might be a little bit less cold, but unsettled, and the jet stream might start to come north again. But uh, as a two weeks as a whole, uh, the JMA is seeing still significantly colder than average temperature anomalies. And uh, the difference is that in this two week period, precipitation anomalies are going above average. So obviously it's turning more unsettled. Initially, probably very snowy through that first week of March, I would have thought, and then going more towards rain as the temperature starts to stage a little bit of a recovery in the second week of March. But a wintry month ahead, uh, really, with the JMA, if that's right. CFS V2 next, then. Let's see how uh, this compares. So, again, these are 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 16th through to the 22nd of uh, February. We've got that blocking signal up to the north, and then we've got below average heights out to our west, and also a little bit over the country. So, this does look a little bit more unsettled compared to what the JMA is showing uh, for the week ahead with the jet stream doing something rather like that. I suspect rather unsettled and probably quite chilly, but not as cold in the week ahead as the uh, JMA is showing. So we have, even a, with week one, the coming week, we have got a little bit of a discrepancy there between the CFS V2 and uh, the JMA. Now this is the CFS week two at uh, uh, 500 mm of our height anomaly takes us from the 23rd of February through to the 1st of March. Below average heights are down to our south and southwest. And then we've got uh, above average heights uh, to our north. So a very strong blocking signal for this last week of February uh, leaves us pulling in uh, very cold or cold or maybe very cold easterly winds. That looks like a proper easterly type situation there uh, that we've got going on with the uh, with the CFS V2 for week two, that final week of February. 
Then we go through to week three, which is the 2nd through to the 8th of March. And the blocky signal continues. It's becoming more focused over Greenland. So hints of retrogression taking the high pressure from Scandinavia to Greenland. Below average heights are to our north and east. And it leaves us pulling in what could be a very cold uh, northeasterly wind. And, of course, this precipitation or this low pressure below average heights to our east and south could be providing the precipitation to give us some quite substantial snow there through the uh, second week of March. So really wintry with both of these models, I think, to the end of February and into the start of March this morning. And then we go through to week uh, four, which is the 9th through to the 15th of March. And similar ideas to the JMA, actually, uh, where the above average heights is going more towards Canada, allowing the below average heights in the Atlantic to start to lift northwards, along with the jet stream, beginning to pull the jet northwards. And so we begin to pull out of that very cold and wintry weather that we have through um, particularly the first sort of week of March, uh, looks like it could be very wintry, uh, week two starts to lift the jet stream northwards and we begin to pull out of that cold and wintry weather. I wouldn't say we're going towards spring, but certainly can be a little bit less cold and it is very unsettled as well. Temperature anomalies then for the week ahead, this is the 16th to the 22nd of February, are coming out average for the UK and actually many parts of Europe are coming out a little bit warmer than average in the week ahead as well. But by the time we go through to week two, we're going colder than average. This is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. We're colder than average for the UK. We're colder than average for most of Europe as well. Uh, week three, which is the 2nd to the 8th of March, again, substantially colder than average. We're around two to two and a half degrees colder than average on the temperature scale. Much of Europe is coming out under three degrees below average. So we're like three to four degrees colder than average for much of Europe uh, through that first week of March. And that is sort of uh, a continent locked into the freezer, really, into the first week of March. And then week four, which is the 9th to the 15th of March, um, it is still a little bit colder than average, but less so than the two weeks before. So again, it implies as we get through to the second week of March, the cold begins to lessen. We begin to relax the cold a little bit as the jet stream starts to push back northwards. We see temperatures returning closer to average, but it would obviously still be uh, very unsettled. Precipitation anomalies in the week ahead look like that, so uh, close to average with rainfall precipitation from the 16th to 22nd of uh, February. Then we go very dry from the final week of February. This is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March, significantly drier than average. That's as the high pressure is blocking things out just to our north, of course, so we're blocking off the Atlantic. Remember, any precipitation that does fall in that week, because it is looking like quite a cold week with easterly winds, would probably be uh, snow. Then um, we go through to uh, this week, which is going to be the 9th through to the uh, 15th. Actually, where are we? So we go through to the 9th to the 15th of March uh, with, uh, that's temperature, so let's go here. And then we want to go to there. Right, we go through to the 2nd to the 8th of March, which is week 3. And the precipitation still driving average to our west, um, near a normal elsewhere. There will be more precipitation around in that week 3 uh, period, 2nd to the 8th of March. And again, a lot of that precipitation could be snow. And then we go through to week 4, which is the 9th through to the 15th of March, and we're going above average with precipitation, and you can see that the jet stream is starting to return northwards and bring that precipitation uh, back. Probably quite a slow process to do it, but eventually it should start to turn a little bit uh, less cold, but also turn wetter. So the long-range models are really in agreement. Uh, not quite sure about the week ahead, but CFS has backed off slightly from its cold outlook for the coming week. But overall, these long-range models are in agreement. 
that the rest of February and into March is going to be cold and wintry. There is a potential for substantial snow in there at times as well and temperatures significantly colder than average. And they then are in agreement that by the middle of March, we should start to see the jet stream lifting northwards. It turns us very unsettled, but we should see the cold beginning to relax. We should start to come out of that very cold period that we have for the end of this month and into the start of next month. The question is, are these long-range models correct with their forecast? Because in today's second video, I'm going to show you all of the uncertainty that we've got just in the week ahead. Um, I've got real disagreements between the models it could be that uh, what these large models are picking up on is that we are delaying the chance of cold weather we have, but it will get to us and it will hit us before the end of the month and into March. But you'll know more about that for today's uh, second video update, which will be coming up later on this afternoon. So come back for that later. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.